exercise 11. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at some of the basic functionality built into Inventor for sheet metal design. And we're going to build a part not unlike what you see here up on the screen. It's a little bit different perhaps, and we'll go through making the drawing for it as well as some of the ordinate dimensions that you see there. And placing the flat pattern. So let's begin with the new part. Make sure it's, you select sheet metal and create. Begin by going to the right above the Create 2D Sketch, click on the icon, and then select the view, or the uh, plane in this case, which is the front plane. And we're going to start off with the circle. Draw a circle out, dimension at 1.5 inches diameter. Go to the Rectangle Tools and find the two-point center rectangle. Glide up to the origin again, drag out a rectangle, and it should be 3 inches by 1 inch. Now by adding these dimensions, unfortunately, um, what happens when we try and trim some of these things away, uh, we'll get a little error message. So I'm going to hit Escape, and I'm going to delete this temporarily, and this one too. Actually, we probably don't have to delete that last one. But here, I'm going to go to the Trim tool now, and we want to trim out some of these. And here's what I was talking about. We, apparently, we do have to delete that dimension. So I was thinking I might be able to get away with it, but it doesn't look like it. So we could add those later. So now when we trim out, we can just draw through what we don't want. Trim out all these sections in here. And then we have our design. Now we can go back and now add those dimensions once again. If you like. And eventually get it fully constrained. We could actually make a center line and so on. But in this case, um, we're going to go ahead and just hit Finish Sketch. Okay, at this point, we're going to go to Contour Flange. Click on Contour Flange, just select the profile, and you'll see it will begin to make a flange for us. Now, one of the things that uh, you'll notice is that when you go through the Contour Flange information, there's no setup as far as like we see the distance of how far it's going to extrude, but we don't actually see the thickness of the sheet metal that we care to use. So before I go that far, if you go to the sheet metal defaults, and you could also do this after the fact too, but you could go back here and you'll see there's the sheet metal rules. You have default or default millimeters. And then over here, if you turn off use thickness from rule, let's go ahead and change this to 0.062, which would be for sheet metal uh, steel. 16 gauge. Okay, and then from here you can see there's other rules you can set up for default K factors and so on. We're just going to go ahead and apply and cancel it. Now let's go back to contour flange. Select the geometry. Now you can see it's considerably thinner than the last one, which was 0.12, so it's almost half thickness. All right, now we do want it to extend two inches, and you'll notice there's different options in here the bend radius information. So a lot of this is taken from your rules that you set up. And you'll see the K-factor unfold rule, bend compensation if you want to choose that. Uh, and then over here is the relief shape. So if we add any uh, flanges to this, like off of the side here, let's say if we put flange, this is going to put in the cut that you see here. And so you can see the um, relief shape. You have tear, round, and straight. And then there's default straight, which is basically the same as straight. Uh, the reason you'd use these is, for example, straight cut would be normally seen in the sheet metal fabrication shop top that's using perhaps laser plasma, water jet, something that could cut out a nice clean corner like that. Now where you might see round is a company that's using die cut. They're die cutting their, their sheet metal. And that's because the corners, if you make a straight corner, they have a tendency to wear out a little prematurely versus if you make a nice rounded cut. And then tear is used quite often in medical applications as well as um, food service. So if you're making a stainless steel countertop for a restaurant, let's say, you'd want to have tear because it's very, it's basically tearing metal versus leaving a big gap in between where the bends take place. Thus, organic material can't get trapped in there. So those are some of the different options. And we're going to go with just the straight cut. And here's some of the parameters for A and B and the relief that you see there. Um, so you can 
fiddle with that if you like. And there's some corner reliefs in this case. You have some options. Uh, again, we're just going to go with the defaults. And we'll just hit OK. Now you can see our sheet metal part. And, um, we're going to go ahead and add a few features to it. Now in our sheet metal tools that we're working in here, you'll see there's the hem feature. Go ahead and select hem. It's very easy to use. Really nice tool. You could go in here, single, teardrop, roll, or double. I'm going to go with single. And the gap thickness of 0.5. And then the, le the length of 4. And that gives you the equal of what that is. That's it's basically a, a little equation going on there. Like here, 0 0.031 is the gap thickness. You can modify that if you want. And then there's some additional options here for default K factor. So you could change it depending upon perhaps maybe it's going on a different machine for that particular bend. And then again, the relief options. We're just going to go ahead and select this edge here. And you'll see it rolls underneath. If you go back to shape, let's change it to teardrop. You can see the preview there. Again, you could adjust the angle and the bend radius. If you go roll, you'll see that. And then double. Okay. I'm going to go with single, though. We'll leave it at that. And you, unfortunately, you can't select more than one edge, so you have to hit apply, and then you can select the next edge. Now, notice this. In this case, I, I want the bend. Instead of rolling down, I want to roll up on this side. So I would select the upper edge. And hit OK. All right, let's go to the flange tool. If you click on flange, you have the ability to um, set up some parameters here. Select an edge. Let's say we want to have this roll down. Let's see here. Okay, you have the ability to um, adjust the bend radius, distance, unfold options. Again, the same rules that we're seeing previously. Now here's where we will actually get. The relief cuts. So this does make a difference at this point where you select this. Now over here we have the ability to um, select uh, the width extents. You can set offset and make uh, various adjustments. So in this case offset from these corners of this edge. Okay, so basically, again, you, a lot of the different options you have here in the distance, let's say we want it to be half inch, so it's 0.5, make it a little shorter, and hit OK. And there you can see it put the relief cuts in there. We have rectangular relief cuts, select that. All right, now, the next thing we'll do is we'll put some different uh, features on here. Like, let's say over here on the front, we want to start a sketch, select Create Sketch. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool and draw out a little rectangle here. We'll make it 0.25 by 0.2. All right, we could position that off of the edge. And then, of course, position this off of whichever edge we prefer. And now I'm going to go ahead and select that geometry. And then I could go to the rectangular pattern. And then I'll select uh, direction. Select this edge. And we can put in how many features we might want. Let's say we want three of those holes. And then we can set the distance for each one. So in this case, we we'll go ahead and set it to 0.3. And hit OK. And now we'll go ahead and finish. We could go to cut, select the three features that you want cut into. Okay, you have the distance. You can put them to next. We'll select the distance and it'll be set to the thickness 0.062 by default with this. And that happens with sheet metal parts, it just knows automatically not to go through everything because maybe we don't want to go through the top and bottom, just through the one thickness that's there. And we'll hit OK. All right, now over here, we'll go ahead and select this flange and start our sketch. And let's say we want to put a little hole in there, because it's going to be uh, to lock into automotive part. So we'll draw on our diameter. We could go ahead and locate that using dimensions to the edges. All 
All right, and at this point, we go ahead and we hit Finish Sketch, and we can go to Cut once again, select the feature, and just let it go through the thickness. If you wanted to go through all, again, you can select through all on both sides. All right, so there's our sheet metal part. You've seen a couple of the basic features. There's much more in here than just that, but let's go ahead and we'll save this. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as SM2 for sheet metal 2. Actually, I should probably call it E11 for exercise 11, but that's okay. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and create flat pattern. You click on this, it automatically generates the flat pattern for us. You can see the bend lines taking place, as well as the position of the actual holes that we added are still maintained even in the flat. Go back to, um, we also have bend order annotation. We have the ability to change or put in which bend should take place before the other as it's being folded. And we're going to go back to folded part here. Now we could go ahead and start a new drawing. And we'll stick with the C size that it gave us as a default. And now we're going to go ahead and go to base. And you can see we have a front view. We also have right here a flat pattern. Let's go ahead and drop a flat pattern at first. And hit the, just click to drop it in. There's our flat pattern. Hit escape. And let's go to some uh, base view here. We'll bring in an isometric view. Let's see what else can we bring in. We'll bring in a front view. And we got fold the top and a right. Oops. One of the things you got to remember with this is that you have to, once you select where you want to drop, then you right click and hit create. Okay, now to add some dimensions, we know that we could just add dimensions by selecting. If you could go to annotate. We're going to use ordinate set. By clicking on ordinate set, you go ahead and you select some of the edges. In this case, we'll click on it twice, and then go ahead and select every subsequent line here, or even edge, so that we can pull off our ordinate dimensions. Okay, then move your pointer down below or above, and then hit right click and you select continue. Now, if you move them up far enough, you'll actually see the wall appear above that. Okay, so you can add your ornate dimensions that way. And of course, you have the standard dimension tool options here if you want to go ahead and add dimensions, uh, just the overall dimensions in this case. If we wanted that to be uh, put a shape in there as an inspection dimension, we could do that too. All right, and of course, you can add the other dimensions. And one thing I did neglect here to do um, when I added the ornate set, I neglected to actually right click to apply that set of dimensions. There. Let's go ahead and add those again. Right click, continue, move them up here, click, then right click to create. Just double click here. I'm going to go ahead and change that to a shaded view for that particular view up there. And if we want to add any text or notes, we can go ahead and put in information that we're interested in. We'll call this exercise 11. We can change the note size if we like. Hit OK. And that concludes exercise 11, Sheet Metal and Inventor 2014.